Hey everyone, this is the Crypto Wonder Podcast, and I am your host, the Crypto Wonder. First and foremost, I'd like to say thank you for lending me your time, your precious energy, and your ear for this moment that we are, or I should say, you are listening to. So, I'm going to speak more about cryptocurrency, and I know, I know cryptocurrency for a lot of people is, you know, incredibly boring. And it can be, you know, complicated and a bit uh, overwhelming. But I like to keep things in a simple, in simple terms and practical. I'm more of a philosophical. Uh, I take more of a philosophical, fundamental approach when it with respects to um, cryptocurrency. I'm not a technical person, so in addition to that, I like I like to tie out all the ideas that uh, I find that cryptocurrency presents to the real world, you know, to like little old me, like what I do and how it affects me and, you know, how it can very well affect others, right? Because um, I believe this is all relative. So let's get into it. Now, there's so many themes that are going on with crypto, right? There's so many themes. There's so there's so much activity that's taking place um, in the space and in the world, and it's it's creating a lot of hype, a great deal of hype. And this is not something that's abnormal, I should say. You know, this is is it's part of human nature. You know, sometimes things garner a great deal of attention and at some point it has to quiet down. But because Bitcoin and and cryptocurrency is so new, right, we're talking about a market that's only been in existence for 12 years. I think the hype and the attention will generate um, more interest and it will grow for quite some time. Sure, it'll, it, it may level off once, you know, more and more people begin to understand how this thing works. But I tell you, folks, ever since I got into crypto, I have not been able to leave it alone because it's the word. I mean, it's more than exciting. I can't even find the word to describe the opportunity that crypto brings into define the feeling that it, it, it provides. Um, this is why I, I've been saying, I've said this in my other um, social media platform, that crypto is, is basically it's been designed for people to use, right? To improve their financial lives and and the quality of their lives, you know, first and foremost. And also, I'd like to just add that I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not someone here who's trying to tell you what you should do with your money and how you should do it and what to invest or not invest in. That's not my modus operandi. That is not my motive. So let's let's just make that clear. I'm not a financial advisor. So do what you wish and what you will with this information. Do your own due diligence. Do your own investigations. Do your own research. Right? That's important because a lot of people don't want to do research. A lot of people don't want to do their own due diligence. They just listen to whatever they want to hear and make the decisions off of what they hear and sometimes end up losing a lot, a lot. And in the end, the, 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 the hardest pill to swallow is the fact that you have to become self-accountable. You have to account for the fact that there's no one else to blame but you because there are nefarious, shady, bad actors in this world that are going to do everything in their power to siphon all the monetary energy from your wallet. <laughs> Serious is, I mean, it's, it, it doesn't get more clear than that. That's why you have to make your own 
decisions based on your information that you've gathered and that you've under you've understood and understand. I can't speak about projects or different things and in, 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 in such a way where you know I, I I'm such a strong advocate for it if I don't have an iota of understanding of what I'm talking about. Number one, that makes me appear to be a fool. And number two, you, if you listen to me, you'll definitely lose. But I'm speaking about things in relative to life and how this can work, how this can affect change and how it is affecting change. And we, we who are at the bottom, and I say that too, at the bottom of this pyramid, it's us. It's us who are at the bottom of this pyramid who are propping this pyramid up. We're the ones that are losing out, people. We're losing out if we don't understand or educate ourselves in what's taking place in the world and why cryptocurrency, especially Bitcoin, is amassing so much attention from all corners of the world. Yes, it's a niche market. It's very small. They say only a hundred million or so people are interacting in crypto. But guess what? It was smaller than that before, but and it's growing. Whether people want to accept it or not, it's growing. When I look at family, when I look at friends, when I look at colleagues, when I look at, you know, co-workers or people who, you know, I'm around in my community and they are indifferent to crypto. In the past four years, out of everyone I've spoken to about cryptocurrency, maybe three, three out of So many individuals took interest and made a decision to get involved in the space in whatever capacity. Three. And I think that right now, the way the things are, the way the state of affairs are, I think that's a shame because this is a a chance for us to Remain competitive. Why do I say competitive? Because people right now are buying this cryptocurrency called Bitcoin. Like it's like it's out of style. Like it's like there's no tomorrow. As if tomorrow, you know, as if today's the last day. Like tomorrow bring Armageddon. Heaven forbid. They are greedily. And I say this often, they are buying it all. And we're just allowing that to take place. It's a shame. It's a shame. I don't know what else to say to people because it's it's almost like How do, how, do, how do you explain, how can you put it any clearer? How can you make it any more simple for people to understand what's going on right here? For people to understand that those who deal with the U.S. dollar, which right now is the number one world reserve currency, the U.S. dollar, that dollar is being devalued by the day. It's losing its value by the day. The money that's in your wallet, the money that's in your purse, wherever you keep your money, it's losing value. It's losing value. From a hundred thousand different ways. The main inflation, quantitative easing, fractional reserve banking, etc., etc., etc. You have an asset now called Bitcoin that is fixed in supply. When people say 
that Bitcoin has no intrinsic value. You got to question the messenger. Question me all as well. Question me. Because you're talking about a, a, a an asset that's been created in cyberspace that is not disappearing. An asset that is affording people to interact with each other person to person. Exchanging monetary energy, monetary value across the world without any middleman involved. An asset that can be counted on the blockchain. Why it can be counted? Because all transactions are captured ever since the first Genesis block was created. January 3rd, 2009, the first Genesis block of Bitcoin. Ever since then, all the transactions to date can be captured, can be can be researched. You can find any and all of us can find everything on that blockchain. You can't cheat anyone out of a transaction. You can't reverse any transactions. This monetary value, this monetary asset is limited, like it's only going to be 21 million. Only won't ever be any more than just 21 million pieces of cyber space quality type of digital gold as they call it. Each day that passes by the network becomes stronger and stronger. Any one of us can obtain this cryptocurrency, can obtain full custody of the cryptocurrency. Any one of us can also run our own full nodes, thereby securing the network, thereby verifying every transaction that takes place on the blockchain on the Bitcoin blockchain network to completely be self sovereign. Any one of us can do that because no one person owns, controls the Bitcoin network in totality. That's why it's decentralized. This is an opportunity that we have never seen. Like, we can't ignore it and pretend like it's nothing. So many people have said this is going to be a Bitcoin bubble. This is the, this thing is going to pop, meaning it's going to, you know, rise the euphoria like a balloon. It'll just blow up and then explode in all of our faces and, and, and be destroyed. What happens to balloons after they blow and, and there's too much air in the balloon? They pop. People think that this is what's going to happen to Bitcoin. Failing to understand the basic principles and elements that allow Bitcoin to work. And regular folks like you and I, we're not stupid. We're not idiots. We see what's going on in the world. We see what's happening in the world. How could we ignore this opportunity? 
that's awaiting, that's here. It's not awaiting, it's here. It's been here for 12 years. How can we just pretend like this is not going on? How can we just look away and think that, oh, uh, like, our, our, by looking away, that plan is better than understanding how this network works, understanding what value Bitcoin is bringing to the world. How can we ignore that? Did we, you know, like, it, again, it brings us back to, it, it, it. well, it makes me think about different advancement that have been made in my lifetime regarding technology. I'm recording. I'm doing this podcast on a device, a handheld device. Something that I didn't imagine occurring 30 years ago. This same handheld device, I can use to obtain the news. I can send messages to anyone anywhere in the world who has the same capabilities as mine. I can watch film, I can have conversations, I can have conversations, visual conversations with people. No one saw this coming 30 years ago. But here we are. You can't ignore and pretend like technology is not a thing. It's not allowing people to live better. Some people, you know, may say Bitcoin, you know, it's they, they're afraid of Bitcoin. They're afraid of what the central banks and the governments and the powers that be can do to stop it, to shut it down, to possibly even lock you up, lose your freedom because you're interacting in this decentralized space. Some people are afraid and they listen to the fear, the fear mongers and the naysayers in the world. You don't think the naysayers understand? This is why they're Stance is what it is. Like they could legitimately have opposing views, sure. But over a period of time, that lessens. Again, look at what we're doing with what <laughs> how communication has improved just from a simple email where people were afraid to create their own emails because they thought that they were giving away their privacy and they were being monitored by government oversight and, and all types of different things. 30 plus years later, here we are, and it's a part of our lives, like deeply a part of our lives. And then there are people who choose not to have emails and choose not to operate in the space. That's their choice. That's fine. Because, you know, people are free to choose. And, and, you know, well, those who live in, 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 in places where they can choose, sure, they're free to choose to have emails to interact with the world and by way of internet, e-commerce, whatever you want to call it. But this is a thing. This is what here we are. This is what's going on. This is what's happening here. This is how the world is unfolding. You know, a person told me years ago about Bitcoin. This is the wave of the future. And I didn't want to believe her. I thought she was just somebody who was just nuts. Showed me an article from the New York. No, no. Was it? the No, it was from the Wall Street Journal regarding Bitcoin, something that was written in 2015, and I paid it no mind. I thought it was money that people used to gamble with, some casino funny money.
I don't even know where, 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 how I even conjured up that thought. Maybe it was from ads, right? Like, you know, different websites that would have ads, casino, and I might have saw the Bitcoin logo attached to it, and that's where, where I drew my conclusion. And out of ignorance, I kept that uh, 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 belief, or that was, that was my understanding, and I was completely wrong. Because I didn't do it then. I, I could have I could have learned about the space then and, and, and possibly invested in 2015. I didn't do it. So that's why I can't beat myself up too much and say, I wish when I first heard about it, because 2015 wasn't the first time I actually heard about it. I heard about it back in 2013, 2012, 2013. But I dismissed it as quick as I heard about it. I didn't take it serious at all. I could have easily, I could easily beat myself up and say, you know, I wish I would have bought then. I wish I would have acquired then. Yeah, shoulda, coulda, woulda. There's, it, it, I can't change that, right? Can't change that. Just like now, there's going to be people in the future because this is, this is how this is moving at such a rapid pace. I don't have a crystal ball and no one can really predict and tell you accurately with 100% conviction where life is going to go and how high, or how high Bitcoin will go. But I'm sure a year, two, three years from now, if this thing continues the way it's continuing, you're going to hear people say they wish they would have bought Bitcoin back in 2021. It seems like it's not, even though the prices, we get caught up with the numbers, right? The numbers affect us. Folks want to have one whole Bitcoin to feel like they're, you know, special. They're important. Oh, how many Bitcoins you have? Bitcoins. Folks don't understand that language. You know, they want to feel like they have one, not a fraction. You know, if they say, oh, I have 0.005 Satoshis or whatever, it, it just, they feel like they're less than, they're not good enough. That's that nonsense. Get that out of your mind. But well, it's going to become that type of language, you know, sooner than later because companies are buying the Bitcoin like it's no one's business. They are buying individuals, there are firms, there are corporations, there are big businesses that are jumping and buying the buying this thing and it's just going to be that reality where folks will not be able to acquire one whole coin they are going to be forced to acquire fractions that's going to be the reality if these exchanges get drained they say there may be like two and a half million bitcoins across all the exchanges in the world once those exchanges get drained to a point it's only going to be Satoshis. It's only going to be a Satoshis that are available. I mean, it's all Satoshis, but you understand, it, there won't be whole coins. They won't. There's so much news that's taking place of companies buying this thing every day. And regular people like you and I, those who are not in crypto, so I can't really say you and I because I love this space too much to to front and act like I'm not, I'm not, you know, uh, uh, investing in the space, taking a chance because when I'm do, I'm doing this, it's not just for me. I have a family to take care of. That's why I'm really in, in this because it's a chance. It's a chance. Those of us who just have the ability and we choose to look away. I mean, that's just, I don't know. Is this, is this, you know, who knows where this is going to, is going to go how far and you know how high it's going to go but we have to really understand that this is the future i don't know I, I mean i'm not saying bet the farm you know throw everything you have in it but ten dollars or so or whatever you know you do what you want like you can buy fractions you can buy look gemini gemini exchange even on Twitter, said you could buy as low as five dollars. 
right? Bitcoin, $5 now. Because you could have got a lot more for $5 a year ago, two months ago, than you can now. So imagine what you you buy $5 now, you hold on to it in the future. That thing is going to be worth a lot more with respect to USD value. But you get my point? A person who pays $5 in the future for Bitcoin won't receive the same amount that you have today. Because what you have today will be worth more then. In the future, they'll buy $5 with the Bitcoin. It's going to be worth less than what you hold. Should this continue to go the trajectory of Bitcoin price action increase? It's it's crazy, folks. It's crazy. This thing topped, topped over $48,000 and we're just in the middle of February. $48,000. A year ago in March, it dropped to $3,800. Like the whole market crashed. And less than a year, in less than a year, this thing reached $48,000. And people, and, and look, we're in a pandemic. The government over here doesn't know when they're going to, if they're going to give out any more stimulus checks for those who need it. Unemployment, people are still unemployed. Businesses are still closed. There's an economic hardship that we're undergoing right now. But in the crypto space, it's a different reality. It's like a parallel universe. There's something else taking place in crypto. And people are seizing the moment. And it's not just you and I. Or it's not most of the people who are in crypto right now who are buying every day are these rich people, these elitists, these wealthy of the wealthy. Whether they're declaring it openly or whether they're doing it behind the scenes, they're buying this thing. And it's yeah, I think it's unfair how much they're buying. That greed is overwhelming. It's like the root of all evil next to money. Greed, that greed factor. What does one person need a hundred Bitcoins for one person? And that's just not even, I'm talking about people are buying for themselves thousands. And saying to heck with everybody else. Forget everyone else. I'm just taking care of my interests. That's the attitude. When are people going to wake up? It's getting to a point, it's getting to a point where I don't know if I'm going to keep talking about this anymore. I might just, you know, switch it up because I've been talking about this for four years. I don't know if I'm going to keep talking about this, like get it before it's all gone. Get it before it's all gone, people. You know, it's one thing if it was just a bunch of poor people, retail, what they call retail investors, retail. You know, they give these these terms, retail. How about regular common folks? But, you know, that's just not, you know, I guess correct or tantalizing enough. Poor people, man, I'm going to say it. Poor people are just letting it go. Even if it's a thing where people have to pull their resources together to acquire, to try to acquire one, one coin, make that happen. You'll, you'll be better off in the future, especially if this is moving in that direction. You know how people are presenting such a good, strong case for Bitcoin. It's undeniable. You have governments, countries who are mining this thing. What do you think that's saying to, to, to the US dollar? Countries like Russia, countries like Venezuela, countries like Iran, countries like China, of course, are mining, have been mining Bitcoin. 
while the US dollar fiat currency is a world reserve currency. If Bitcoin surpasses $250,000, the value it will over it will outshine the price of the US dollar. Like when I say outshine the price, it will become the world reserve currency once it surpasses 250k and that's not what i'm saying that's what the experts are saying what do i know i'm just sharing information and having a dialogue 250k is not that far away especially if in one year this thing went higher than 10 11 12x 50k here we are 45 whatever times 10x there you go it's not un, it's not impossible it's not impossible with the wall of money that they're saying that's on standby that's actually getting ready to pull the trigger that have been declaring you have these i mean it's like it's here we are we're here we're here we're here we're here folks there's no there's no need to speculate anymore we're here we're here we're here and the fear of missing out what they call fomo is very real and fomo these corporations are not void of fomo they're not devoid of fomo at all you can see it oh this 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 billionaire they want to they want to get in they want a piece of that action you know billionaires follow billionaires they want a piece of that action. Some say, you know, misery loves company, but success loves success too. Success loves company too. And they follow each other's actions. That's evident. We see it. We see it. I feel bad for my people, though. And I'm talking about, you know, just like, yo, we at the bottom here. We're at the bottom, and this is an opportunity where, where it balances. It could help balance and equalize the odds. It could help level the playing field. We're, I mean, really, I'm not depending on people to tell me that they're going to buy islands to help provide, you know, a, a, a positive service to humanity. And just not be in the game myself. I'm not going to just do that. And shout out to Chamath Palihapitiya. Because he said once his Bitcoin coffers reach a certain level. He's going to buy the Hamptons in New York. And call it Champtons. Whether he was trolling or not. This is what he said he was going to do. And, and, and build low income housing. Have like farms. And, 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 and schools for kids. In the Hamptons. Super uber wealthy Hamptons. He will buy it. I'm not waiting for him to do that. I'm not going to say, listen, I think I'm going to just do nothing and wait for Mr. Chamath P to do that. And then I'll go and, and enjoy the spoils that way. No, not when we have a chance to jump into space. Not when we have, you know, I'm not crazy about Coinbase. But, you know, they're available. I'm not crazy about them, though, at all. Now when we have, you know, other exchanges in the U.S. too, you know, Binance or, or, or Kraken or what? I don't know if Kraken, I don't, I don't know. You know, Gemini, of course, you know. And now, and now, of course, like this other on-ramps, PayPal, Visa is introducing opportunity to, 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 Help people buy crypto if they want or receive payments in crypto. MasterCard just declared uh, they're going to do that this year too. You know, Bit, uh, 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 Bit uh, Square, Cash App, you can receive. There's other ways. There's so many ways. Local Bitcoins too off the market, over the counter. You can acquire Bitcoin that way as well. Packs full, etc. There's just so many. I can't begin to even run down the line. Why wait for someone else to, 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 to deliver on a promise when you can reclaim or obtain an opportunity 
to strengthen your your worth, your, your you know your your value. I mean, like your ability to exercise your 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 sovereignty. Like this is all crazy because you could you could if really keep all your wealth in your brain, not in a bank, not in a a, a brokerage account, not in a four hundred one k or four hundred three b or retirement or whatever. We could keep all of that. Not in a safe, safe deposit box and whatever, whatever. You could keep all your wealth in a bank. In a, I'm sorry, in a bank. My goodness. My goodness. Freudian slip. You could keep all your wealth in your brain. By memorizing your private keys. By memorizing your private keys. Whatever they are. That's what this brings to the world. You know how crazy that is in a great way how unbelievably incredible and fantastic that is and folks are just like sleeping they're just waiting for a stimulus it's sad man not to say that people don't deserve a stimulus don't get me wrong don't get me wrong. Everything is a mess right now financially. But for many people, everything is glorious financially. You want to be on the side where everything is glorious as well financially. You want to be on that side. Why not? Why not? To afford to afford a better quality of life. To afford yourself an opportunity to to experience freedom like complete and folks like traveling in the world who live solely on bitcoin that's it they are they completely they're unbanked by choice and have relinquished whatever accounts they had closed them and live off of bitcoin and crypto Some people believe crypto is, you know, privacy issues and et cetera, et cetera. But, and that's fine that, you know, like, you know, evolution though, there's going to be advancements that, that allow people to, to, I mean, this thing, this, I can't even imagine how this how far this is, what this is going to look like in four years, in five years, after the next having folks where the issuance of the Bitcoin is decreased by 50%, then we're really going to see, we're really going to see huge changes, huge changes. And I say that because these firms, these big businesses and rich people are buying this Bitcoin by the day. They're buying more Bitcoins that are being, they are buying more Bitcoins per day than the Bitcoins that are being mined. 900 a day gets mined throughout the world. And these companies are buying thousands of them per day so imagine when that 900 gets cut in half 450 you think this is a a a bull market now (laughs) you think there's a bull market now wait till that Wait till then. Wait till then. Wait till the world wakes up. 
because it's going to take time. I get it. It's all going to take time. This is a, 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 a shock to the financial legacy systems. And it has been a shock for 12 years and it will continue to shock through the financial legacy systems. I mean, pillage through all the governmental and central bank structures and just like create this tsunami. It's just, it, it, it's just crazy. I feel like they have to either play ball or not. But you know what? I'm not here to cheer for the central banks. I'm not even here to cheer for the likes of JP Morgan Chase and 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 Citibank and all these banks. I'm not here to cheer for them. I'm not even here to cheer for the millionaires and billionaires. I'm here to cheer for the people. The real people at the bottom. The real people who have been debt slaves. That's who I'm here to cheer for. That's who I'm rooting for. We are the underdogs because it's it's turned into that. And it's a race. It's a race right now. The wealthy are racing against each other. They don't care about us. They don't want to lose their control. They don't want to lose their power. They don't want to lose their opportunity to say and, and, and direct and govern and regulate. They don't want to lose these things. That's why they're acquiring so much. That's why so many are even implementing uh, bad messages and negative messages like FUD every day. They want to scare us away from the opportunity to experience self-sovereignty with the help of Bitcoin. And I'm going to say one last thing before I go. Today I saw an article um, about Kenya an official from Kenya mentioning that, you know, he, Bitcoin is uh, going to fix their monetary problems. And I shared the article, I guess, because I was so excited to hear that because there's a central bank official, an official, a central bank governor from Kenya mentioned this. And I, my mistake was I didn't really do any fact finding and that's a mistake that I made I shared the article I went on Twitter and started sharing the article and immediately I got responses that it was fake news and I had before I got to take it down I got a, a, a message on telegram from this orange pill group headed by Max Kaiser and uh, his lady. And the people in the group were just telling me that, you know, it's, 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 it's um, you know, fake news. And then I went back and I looked and discovered, yes, this was a satire. It was satirical in nature, the article, right? So, in other words, it was fake. And I got backlash, you know, I, I got... Uh, threatened to get instant banned by Max Kaiser's lady. And I said to myself, yo, okay, whatever. But I removed it. And she said to me, it's, it's that I'm lucky she didn't find it because or else I would have been banned from like, and these are people who these two individuals are people who fight the system, right, and exclaim every day on how Bitcoin is censorship resistant, permissionless, borderless, but hey, I get it, I understand, when you find somebody who has an article and it appears to be, you know, spam, you know, you're, 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 you're gonna be upset because you don't want that in your, in your telegram group, my mistake, you know, 
But you know, like that group, okay, this, her thing was, if you're going to be dumb enough not to read uh, the previous messages, because her thing was, they've been hearing about this Kenya fake news all day. And if you're going to be dumb enough not to read the previous messages, then you're going to find yourself instant banned. And, you know, it's just whatever, whatever. Like, I'm, my, my whole point in, in saying this is people make mistakes, and I understand. But her group and their group is um, whatever. It's just a hype fest over there, 20,000 members, because they want to protect their 20,000 members. Go protect your 20,000 members. You know, like, I'm still in the group. Go protect your 20,000 members. And, and frankly, I don't have it. Like, the group, if you miss a day watching that group, it, you're going to see, like, 5,000 or so, 9,000 messages in there. I'm not scrolling up 9,000 messages to see what they're talking about. All right? Because it's just a lot of information that I, I don't have the time. Crypto is too vast. Too much going on to read 9,000 messages. So shout out to them for what they're doing because, you know, I can't go too hard on them because I know I made a mistake. But at the same time, I recognize the whole banning thing. You're afraid to get banned on Twitter. That's why you created the Telegram group. You're afraid to get banned on Twitter. You're afraid to lose your notoriety, but you're quick to ban people, honest, real people, not robots, who make on you who made a genuine mistake the hypocrisy is real there's a lot of hypocrisy <laughs> and contradiction so i noticed that and it's a great thing that i'm a person who you know i do my research i do my research well and thankfully they weren't a part of my research <laughs> i just jumped on their thing because of the whole uh, Wall Street bets and and that whole foray and, and hype that that created. So they were just talking on Twitter, talking about how before they get banned, should they get censored on Twitter, go join their Telegram. And I said, yeah, why not? But it doesn't matter to me either way because I've been in, in this space and without them, They've been in it longer than me, so shout out to them for that. But the information I have so far, the solid information, I didn't get it from them. <laughs> I didn't get it from them. Frankly, I don't need it because there's a lot of other that you can, you know, one person doesn't have all the knowledge of crypto out here, right? That's impossible. Anyway, I want to thank my listeners for, for taking the time to listen to the, to the episode and guess what? I'll catch you on the next one. I hope you remain well. You keep safe out here. And you just educate yourself on this cryptocurrency. Talk to you later.